The next would be uh, moving to the, uh, the Greco-Roman world. Uh, I became very interested in, in Plato, and uh, I, I would I'd like to note that these paintings range over about 20 years of time, so that I'm not putting them in a chronological sequence. I'm, I'm putting them more in a, uh, a, a kind of typology. I, I became interested in, in setting the earth itself with uh, ancient civilizations. I think many people uh, have done this. You'll find that as a, the theme of Atlantis runs through uh, many people's work that uh, we can see this in the visionary realm. I actually did a, uh, a project in which I uh, made a model of Atlantis and proposed it as a, uh, as, as a way of, of studying the concept of, of utopia on the world level. I made it into a kind of a, a ship. It would be um, a mile by a mile, 0.618, so that it was related to the, the golden proportion. And this would go around the Earth and pick up its own crew and uh, begin to develop the concept of of it as more than simply a literary. M many people believe that it's simply untrue, or that many people believe it's true, and yet their only contact with each other is like it's through the publishing system. A land-based form, uh, th this, this was done prior to people's interest in, uh, in, in say, uh, postmodern architecture, uh, having worked for Kiesler, who worked for Adolf Luce, that I, I took the Temple of Zeus and the, uh, the winning, not, not the winning, but the one that should have won the Chicago Tribune Tower uh, competition in 1922 and put it on top of this because that also said that if this is not used at this point, someday some architect will use it for some purpose. And so I thought this was, this was a good way of connecting into a soft point in architectural history. But th this would have been the land-based uh, utopia study center that would be connected with the, the Atlantis project. This took place, uh, I was going to have it placed behind the uh, now defunct uh, roller coaster at Revere Beach, the cyclone, which would be turned into a, a, a walkway with many kinds of events that people could uh, deal with. Uh, and, and another aspect of, of Plato is like his, un, his unwritten work. Um, it, just before he wrote the laws, his last book and, and his letters to private individuals, he wrote three, or was, was intended to write three dialogues. The, uh, the, the Timaeus, which was his cosmology, the Critias, in which Atlantis is described in kind of uh, architectural um, specifications almost, and finally the, the unwritten Hermocritus. Uh, part of his style was to leave something undone from one dialogue so that it create a problem to develop the next one. So I, I thought I'd finish or do the, the Hermocritus, and that you'll find that, um, say, in the, in the visionary sensibility, like a world view or a meta history becomes a prime consideration. Uh, especially in the kind of pro prophetic realm. He, um, I, so that I, I think reconstructing it, uh, it would be constructed from parts of the other dialogues, which is essentially what he started doing. So he got the whole thing going together so that they all work as one thing. And so he, oops, he postulated uh, three ages. The, um, the first age, would be like the golden age in which things operated properly. Uh, young people got old um, in that way. And then the second age was the result of the gods abdicating their position or, or their control. And so it was like running the movie backwards. And so this became a disaster. You know, food would come out of people's mouths and thrown into the chicken and run away. Just like running the movie backwards. So they, this was like one of the first references to, uh, to doing that, which is now a popular thing in movies. Um, the third age is when you have a condition of things running forwards and backwards. And, and this is where you get his reference to, say, the, the political styles 
of going from aristocracy to democracy, oligarchy, democracy, and finally to tyranny, and then the thing would be begin over again. This is where, uh, like, the fates come in. Um, the fates represented as three women, the, the Cassius, Papo, and Atropos, the person who uh, pulls, who cards the wool, the person who, uh, who determines the length, and the person who cuts it off. So that, that here is when, like, a, a linear history is beginning to be formed, <laughs> as well as the sense of, of cycles. And uh, th this is why I think we can legitimately connect uh, Plato as, as like one of the prime influences to, to the visionary genre, which uh, I think it did, in a sense, have a beginning. But the beginning uh, is so long ago, and, and people might postulate that all our ideas about the, the length of, of uh, the time that humans are on the Earth it keeps getting longer and longer. So he may simply have been programming information from a uh, extremely distant past. All the time, like, like, yes. Not the other way. Yes. How's that? Okay, sorry about that. Oh, uh, this is like uh, Plato's uh, analogy of the sun, the line, and the cave, in which he actually describes how, how uh, to himself, how the mystical experience operates. He used the line to give you a sense of the proportioning system, that this is the golden proportion, and I've laid it out in that manner. The cave where the, the, the prisoners would observe the, the shadows of figures behind them, one of them would be released, see at first the, uh, what it was that was producing the shadows, then the fire that was the source, and then go out and finally see one of the forms uh, with, of the, the so-called highest form of the good, which was represented by the by the sun, and then have to come back and be very inarticulate to the rest of the people that were in prison. Now, this is a, a perfect analog of how most people, when they have the first mystical experience, um, find it very difficult to verbalize or even provide any kind of way of, of presenting this poem. So again, we have like things like a, a kind of chitonic uh, inside of the earth and finally using the sun as the, as the notion of, of enlightenment. Uh, Plato further talked about how, the, say, the human soul, when, when you're talking about the world soul, he also added a, a kind of curious codicil that the, the individual soul was made up of leftover materials when the, when the universe was being created. So where star materials are, are so we'll go back to the star. And uh, the, the form of it would be the three great forms of existence, difference, and sameness, in, uh, which is exactly the way he described the, uh, the universe being made. Now these forms, for anything to exist, uh, it must, of course, have the sense of existence, but it also must have the, the concept of sameness or difference, that you can't have any kind of uh, language discourse without there being a way to compare and, and contrast anything. So I, I think that's a kind of, uh, of deep-seated notion about what, what human mentality is all about.